welcome to another art lesson in the Paint with Heart studios. I'm Cindy Harrison, your artist in residence and host of Paint with Heart. And we are going to paint a very lovely scene. I can't say it's a beach scene necessarily, but it's something that if you were on, when I go to Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard or something like that, this is like a typical scene and you can walk down the streets and you will see somebody propping a bicycle a, a you know an antique bicycle against a white picket fence with the ocean in the background so that's what we're painting today that's my homage to going to martha's vineyard in nantucket but before we get before we get to ahead of ourselves here let me introduce you to my bestie from la Ms. Melis. Melissa. Hi everybody, I'm Melissa Reyes and you may know me as Ms. Melis. And I'm really excited to be here, Cindy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about loving the journey and uh, painting with you today on Paint With Heart. Awesome, thank you and thank you for being here. Okay, so this is my... Um, my finished piece. So as you can see, if I can straighten out my camera a little bit here, this is on a picture frame that I picked up from Michael's, would you believe it? And it was $1. So you can go to Michael's right now. They have a whole bunch of these still, and they have different shape cutouts as well. So you can pick up um, those and give them as, you know, do them up and give them as nice little inexpensive gifts. Uh, love the journey. I thought was perfect for our word on a bicycle. We can go on our journey and enjoy every everything we see, right? The love the journey are also wood. It's wood cutouts like this. And the only thing is, is I went to three Michaels in my area and all the love the journeys are sold out. So, the closest thing I could find to the theme of the week was chase your dreams. So that's what we're going to, I'm going to show you how, you know, and it's not rocket science here. So <laughs> I had to paint that, but chase your dreams is also a very, another, very uh, nice saying as well. I like chase your dreams too. It evokes action and movement. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to start by on the inside this inside is done i painted it on watercolor paper today i'm going to paint it on canvas but that's okay first we're going to start off with our blue haven and snow white and if you haven't guessed by now i really love doing this lip slappy kind of uh, blend your colors while on the canvas technique. <laughs> so put out a puddle of Blue Haven. And I choose Blue Haven over like a baby blue or something like that because Blue Haven is a, a softer, duller color than the, um, than the blue baby, the baby blue. Blah, 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 blah. The blue baby. The blue baby, yeah. So I'm gonna I take- don't have Blue Haven. You, you do not have Blue Haven? I do not. Okay, so you have a blue chiffon. If you're gonna yes. use, if you have blue chiffon, that would work and you probably wouldn't need any white mixed with that. If okay. you have baby blue, mix more white with it. Okay, thank you. Just a little brighter. You're welcome. So I'm gonna, Always wake up your brush and water, you know, and then take all the water out that you can. And I'm going to pick up on um, half of my brush with the blue and the other half with the white. And I, before I get ahead of myself again, I did draw my horizon line on here. That's the line between the sky and the water that line I drew that line on and then I did draw the line of the top support horizontal support of the fence just so I knew I really didn't need to go further than that with this color 
uh, let's go white down, blue up. White down, blue up, and go across your watercolor paper. And if you put it on the diagonal, you can streak it in and then you get some blue in the white mix. If you're working with a very light blue, you probably don't need any white, but maybe some darker blue. But just go and see what you, what you get with what you have. I don't like a lot of um, clouds or dark gray skies. That's stormy. I don't like stormy. I'm not a fan of stormy. I'm going to now blow dry that so that I can move on to the water. Okay, if that's dry, I'm going to take some tape, um, painter's tape, masking tape, scotch tape, whatever you have. But if it's going to have a high tack to it, if it has high tack to it, what you want to do is put it on your clothing. So I can put it on my clothing and take some of that tack off. Okay, make it makes it a little fuzzier and less tacky. I'm gonna put it right over on my sky above that line, the horizon line. Make sure that you have, now if you're gonna put your tape around the sides and stuff, Always make sure that you fold it into itself so you have some kind of a tab to lift off with so you don't have to try peeling it off. Makes it easier just to remove the tape when it's time. You're so smart. That's so that's smart one. I'm trying. I'm trying. But thank you everyone for coming today. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is add to my puddles on my palette. I'm going to add um, bright blue. It's a, it's a new color. I think it came out this year. So it's this year's color. If you don't have that, maybe a true blue, an ocean blue. So you want a fairly bright, deep color. Pick up that brush again. And with a little bit, this time I'm gonna do half in the Blue Haven or the light blue, and the other half in that bright blue, the deeper, darker blue. Start with the dark on top again, and we're gonna go across our water. And then walk it down, and you can go a little bit beyond that line just in case you don't cover all that, you don't want any white background to show through. If you want to streak some white in, you can streak it in this way. I'm going to just go over it. I really want to keep the darkest blue at the top. Let me go back and add that. I like the streakiness, but I don't want the, um, brush marks. When you do this, you see that brush mark there? I don't like that. So I try to go all the way off the sides. Doesn't that look kind of watery? Yeah, that's a good one. If your sky is not as blue as you want, you can go back and add more. Let's blow dry this. I like how I'm talking and nobody can hear me because I was muted. <laughs> yeah, you did it to yourself. I know. I was talking about all the things that I like. I was seeing how I like that pretty blue and how I like the pink lamp, um, the light on the ceiling in Ramona's room. <sighs> oh, well. You gotta look at it. Look at that. So mine is a little pocky because, and I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can. See how it bled through some of the areas? Because that, that tape is, I guess, not really a good tape for, can, um, for canvas. 
So some of that area bled through. So what I'm gonna try and do is go over it just to smooth it down. See if I can smooth it down with some of this blue. And the thing of it is, is we're gonna put some things in front of it. Now, if you did get that heart shape um, frame, when you do the canvas, you're gonna have that outline of the heart on here. So you really don't need to go out to the sides like I'm doing. You can stay within the heart and you'll, you know, you can go just a little bit beyond the heart, which is what I had done when I painted mine. Okay, now we know this is where the top of our fence is gonna be. I'm gonna add a little bit more Blue Haven to my sky. I think it's a little too white. Let's bring some of that down. If you're into sunset sunrises and you wanna put a little peachy color on that horizon line, I, I, you could go ahead and do that as well. If you, I'm gonna do this. I'm not sure that I'm gonna like it, but I'm gonna do it. Take some of your ocean blue color with a lot of water. You see I had a lot of water here and I'm going to chop it in my sky area. So just a little bit. See if that makes any difference. Go ahead and a lot of blow drying today. Sorry, ladies. Where's our handy dandy deer foot brush? And we're going to take out olive green and plantation pine. So if you ladies um, have issues finding colors, just uh, email me and I can get it for you and send it to you. Okay, I'm gonna take this all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna start with, let's start by picking up some of the plantation pine and pounce it out so it's across all the hairs and not a big blob and then start to add this color along the bottom edge. And I am leaving some white, but not a lot. And I'm just gonna build up this bush. And typically when I was on the beaches of um, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, it was rose bushes or hydrangea bushes. Very um, common for the beach houses, the houses on those islands to have huge hydrangea bushes and wild roses, beach roses. It's just dropped a gorgeous. So we're gonna go up above that that horizontal line we made for the support of the fence. Now, when you get to above where the fence is, you're going to then start making irregular pattern on the ocean. You don't want that line straight across like I created down here. You're gonna go up and down and up and down and make some irregular pattern. Go back in and with a second coat of this dark color. If it's not dark enough for you in the depths of this brush, you can always go ahead and add in a little Payne's gray to your plantation pine. And that will make it just a titch darker. Don't add a lot. And keep it down low. And 
we're not doing 10 soldiers in a row here. We're kind of being sporadic and kind of be sporadic in here too. Kind of, kind of give some depth to our bushes. Okay. So now we have some bushes in front. We have some bushes behind. You see how that all starts to happen? Okay, wash your brush out. And we're going to then pick up some of this olive green and try and keep it on the on the toe. And I'm going to start at the top and be airy. If you're not sure of your touch, start on an area that you know is going to be covered by a picture frame. And I'm just gently pouncing down over the tops. And let's start with some of this area. Creating different, actually creating different bushes. You don't have to get too far south because we're going to have the fence there and bicycle and stuff and it'll be all covered up. But you want to just be very light on your touch, not have a lot. If you need to add more, go back and add more, but start off with just pouncing it very lightly. Now we're going to blow dry that. I know, I'm all about the blow drying today. Well, that's okay. I'm putting my pattern on and I'm using my T square, which I did when I did the horizon line because I didn't want my horizon line to be quirky. And I'm going to now put back the horizontal um, support lines of my fence. And then we can draw. Now the, the post for the flag is not really straight. So I, I wouldn't necessarily use a ruler because the wind, you know, it's not a very sturdy post. So you can put that in there. Now, if you can't see it, if you can't see your lines because you're putting them on the dark green, you have to take the gray or the dark graphite off and find yourself some light graphite. And Let's put these lines on. So that we can see them. And I don't care. I'm going through the flag. I'm going to go through the bicycle. bicycle. Let's not put that bicycle on right now. Let's just worry about getting the fence on. Straight on. Okay, for right now, I'm just going to go with that. So we've got the flag, flagpole, fence in there. I'm going to do the fence first. And I'm going to do the fence with, let's go with a number six flat. and pick up some white not too glob you don't want a glob of white on your brush because it'll go all over so start on off like again if you have a heart you're going to start on the part that's going to be hiding underneath your mat and i'm going to on a diagonal because i think the four might be too big a two might have been better but that's okay i'm going to go in with this white and do the peak and then bring it down. You want to mix a little bit of moisture with that so that the paint drags smoothly, flows smoothly down. So 
So do that all the way across. And I'm going to go right through the white flag or the flag. For right now. What did I say? This is always the boring part, the mundane. But it has to be done before you can get to the beautiful part. And if while you're there, if you know, if you wanted to paint the flag white, you could do that too. Because this whole area here, where the white stripes are going to be, has to all be whited out. And I'm not, I, I could go out to the edges, but I'm not because I am planning on putting the heart here and um, putting a mat on top of that. So let's blow dry that. You wanna make sure this is a more solid than the fence. The fence is kind of in the noise, but the flag is gonna be our, one of our focal points, our focal point actually. So you're gonna want that white area to be more solid than not. Blow dry that again. On our fence, if you need to put the um, lines back on, of course, I don't know if everyone is caught up to me. I suppose we should ask that first before I continue on. I'm going to put the... Can oh, you see where everybody is? Is that what you want to do? I'm thinking so. All right, I'll let you think. I'm going to put this here because I want to separate my flag from my fence. Okay, All right. Ruthie, how you doing? Do you mind me calling you Ruthie? I don't know. <laughs> no, I I go by Ruthie. Um, okay. I'm working on my, I'm working on my flag. Okay, no worries. Just see where you are, Kathy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I just uh, I'm I've got to work on my flag. My fence isn't very good, but I'm doing it on canvas, so I'm it's a little damp. I like that. Well, yeah, I have that blow dry handy dandy, but I like your fence because it looks, you know, authentic. That's what you want. Oh, okay. It's too perfect. It's like, you know, built by the manufacturing, you know, a, a manufacturing company. This is, <laughs> this is a handmade fence and it's great. <laughs> Cynthia, do people call you Cindy or is it always Cynthia? Cynthia. 
Is it? Okay, just checking because I'm not a Cynthia. I'm a Cindy. Always. I, I was born in a Cindy. That's my birth certificate. Oh, I'm a Cynthia. The only, my family calls me Cindy. Yeah. Nobody else. <laughs> so how, how are you doing on that? I'm doing good. I'm basing my, my flag in the white. Oh, good. That's awesome. Okay, I'll let you guys get keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Okay, Ramona, how you doing? Oh, I'm so far behind, but that's okay. I'm good. How so far is so far? I'm still on my, I just finished because I kept messing, my horizons wouldn't meet on the heart. So, because I have, anyway, it wouldn't meet. Can I see? To, huh? Can I see? Sure. That's all I've got done so far. Oh, I love it. I love it. Don't worry about the horizon. Don't worry about it. Really? Yeah. But every that, time I put the heart back on, it's like the heart's only got, the, the sky's only this big. So I have to keep going down and down and down and down and take away what I made way too much luck. My car's, my car. <laughs> my heart is not, my sky's not that big. Yeah, but I'll show you. Well, it's wet, so I can't show you because I have to dry it first. Okay, how, yeah, everyone should have blow dryer like, like a, a cowboy with his gun on his side, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should all have our, our holster with our blow dryer right at our hip. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, you don't have to have a whole lot of skies <laughs> there. Okay. But, but I like what you've done. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Where are you at, Melissa? Oh, good. Okay. So, but um, you, I did want to say to you that I was excited because I became a patron on your Patreon. No, <laughs> you're so silly. I'm supporting you now for one dollar a month, Cindy, for the rest of my life. <laughs> so. Um, because I have a Patreon account too, so it was really easy to go on to patreon.com and find you just by searching Cindy Harrison. And then I found your uh, Patreon account and it said that I could support you by, for a dollar a month and all I did was say okay or whatever and submit. And then I got a little email and it said, you know, confirmation and it takes it right out of my own account and it starts in June and for until I tell it to stop. So I thought, that's so easy. I just wanted to try it to see what it was like. <laughs> so everybody should support, like a dollar a month, you would never even notice it. And if everybody did it, it would really add up. That is so cool. Yes, yeah. I know, I know. It's, it is, it's easy. They make it so easy for you. And, and I do have some other patrons, so I will be coming up. Um, Kathy, I believe is one of my patrons, and Ruth. And I will be coming up with a special class for just them. That's awesome. That's so, so cool. It is going to be cool. So they'll get a notice within the next month or so. Okay. So my fence is not the perfect and that's okay. I'm going to take a little bit of that Payne's gray and I'm going to, and I, like I said, a real little bit, take some water and my liner brush, maybe that's too much water, mix some paint with that water. I'm looking at this straight on, but I'm gonna pretend that these fence pickets are going away from me as they go out. So straight on, you're not gonna see the thick edges of the picket, but as you start to move away from it, you would see it. So on this side, you'll see And you can use either Payne's gray or a black, a black and white mixture if you want. You can lighten it up with some white. You're gonna see outline the left side of the pickets on the right and the right side of the pickets on the left, if that makes any sense to you. This, what I'm using is a 10-aught liner, 
10 slash zero. And you go till you feel like you wouldn't see the sides of your picket anymore. And that's the thickness, the thickness of your fence, fence posts, fence pickets. And go underneath your, your um, flag, don't go beyond the flag there. If you go over like I just did, you can take a clean, brush and just wipe it back in that line down now i'm going to say that's like 12 o'clock so i'm not going to put any on that one i'm going to go over and now start coming from the right If you want to outline the left, the other side, the opposite side with white to make it more straight. But again, if we're doing a handmade fence and, and they're all hand cut, not machine cut. Plus being by the ocean, they're going to be pretty weathered. Weathered, yeah. Even after one season. It's okay. So this fence is going away from us now. You can, I'm going to take my, the little six flat with some watered down Payne's gray, Payne's gray white mixture. And I'm just going to wipe it off of my paper towel and just color in that area where the sun doesn't shine right here. I know a lot of detail work and you say, why do we even bother? But I think it's all going to make a difference. Now that pops those pickets forward. Too dark, just tap it off with your finger. Easy peasy. Sometimes you need a, a project that doesn't require you to invoke too many brain cells. Now, do you see it? Do you see how that, by putting a little bit of the wash of the Payne's gray or Payne's gray plus white mixture on that horizontal post, horizontal piece of wood two by four sets it in the background and then all of these vertical pickets come forward mm -hmm. and and it was just with a with a wash of color that's all that that pretty much is all that did that well i found a little word to go on mine it's kind of little because yeah. i didn't get the words what let me see it says daydream. Oh, backwards? no, 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 put it the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also have, I, I had a, a lot more, but I can't seem to find them. I sent I you a whole bunch. Well, I didn't get the new ones I knew I, last year. Yeah, I've got them somewhere, probably believe. put away. There was Believe yeah. and yeah, Amazing and Inspire. But none of them really go with journey or move. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to, when this is dry, I'm going to trace on my bicycle and the red stripes. Put the lines on for the red stripes because I tried doing it freehand and I really stunk at it. So now if you have Ms. Melissa's Mandela. Number 75, this area here was the center of my wheel. And then the rest of this was the outside of my 
my frame. So all of this area was this. So if you have either this or you have a different kind of stencil that has a round circular thing in the center, that's, the, that's gonna be your wheel right here. I don't know if you can see it real well, right? That, that gray, dark gray area, that was the stencil. I had actually traced on those lines and then painted them. Okay. No, I like that you used the stencil. Take your liner brush, your black and white together to make a dark gray mixture. Let's get that wheel done. So some lamp black and some snow white mixed together. So put those spokes in, if you will. Take your liner brush. The tire I would put in with black. And that's going to be right against the fender. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, these parts. We also, the inside of the, these are white wall tires, so the inside of the um, tire, <laughs> that gray mixture as well. And then between the black and the gray is gonna be the white walls of the tire. So that's gonna go there. So you do that all the way around. I love using my stencils. <laughs> I know, isn't it fun? <laughs> yes, it is. I can't wait for you to get to that part. Okay. I don't like cleaning them though, Cindy. No. Uh, give me an easier way. Well, you made them so intricate. What can I say? Yay. I'm going to add some highlights of white by just touching some areas, almost like a dry brush, on those spokes, the curly Ms. Melis Stencil 75 spokes. And a little bit on that rim. And I probably shouldn't have put any on the top, but I'm going to put some there. Okay. And then I'm going to also shade using my number six flat and some of the black on a side load. Not a lot of people's favorite technique, but I'm gonna side load some of that on the spoke against the rim. And against the center. Now, I'm going to add the two spokes that connect the bumper to the axle. I believe that's what it's called. And we're gonna make this be a lighter gray value. More white, less black. And that would be right here, connecting that bumper to the axle. And it goes right over our tire. While that's drying, go up to your C 
seat. We're going to paint our seat and our red part of our bicycle white. Let's see. It's going to come from here. I'm going to go right through my tire. If you need a, a thicker round brush, that's fine too. And when on my heart, um, frame, it doesn't really show up. Go ahead and put it back in there. I contaminated my white with black. Oh no! I know. That's what happens. I had so much fun with that value one where we did all the gray. Yeah. And then painted over it the color. I like seeing was it Ruth did it and she showed us the um, ones that she had done. Mm -hmm. Started with the gray values and it just is amazing. You know, I what I touched upon was really, really, you know, not basic. Yeah. Yeah, real basic. But what you can really do with that is amazing. Totally. I'm just going to come around. It actually covers up most of the tire. Is that tender white or light gray? This is going to be white because we're going to paint it red. Oh, okay. And if you covered up too much of your black, like I just did, I'm going to go take. And I do this just so that the color will show up better underneath it. Okay. The little support that supports the, um, the flagpole, I'm going to make gray. And it connects to the pole under the bottom of the seat. Now, the top of the seat is actually a black. You want to leave a little bit of a white showing in the back and a little bit of the side of the seat is white here. I'm going to take a side load of that black and I'm going to shade the support and underneath the seat. And then the side of the of the seat. I think I didn't dry it. That's what happens. Well, I'm going to shade these supports over here, the fender. And you can chisel on the bottom. 
Move that fender. Okay. Let me stop for a second and I will put that up here so you can see it in my little seat. So how's everyone doing? <clears throat> Ruth, how are you doing? Uh, I'm working on the bicycle, but it's <laughs> I had to draw my pattern back on because the graphite was too light. And did you say the big spokes are darker than the little wiggly ones, or are they the same color? Yep. See, they're darker. They should be darker. My my um, role model here might be like. See if I show you this one. Hold on, let me. Spot. Yeah, the big ones look lighter. See, that these spokes are darker than the support of the fender. That's what I was asking you. Yeah. So those are the lighter ones. Yeah, the, the, the ones supporting the fender are lighter. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So let's see, and Kathy has left the room. Haha, <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> How are you doing, Cynthia? Just doing my spokes. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's good, Ramona. I'm still on the <laughs> Let's see. Very, very slow. Oh, beautiful. Yep. That's going to be gorgeous. When it's done, I don't know. Like messed up the graphite. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So, how you doing, Melissa? I'm doing fine. <laughs> what you up to? Oh, nothing. What are you doing? <laughs> You'll see. You're funny. Well, you'll see. Okay. This sweet. Not ready to show you yet. Okay. So this is what the original looked like. And it looks like I actually even did some outlining of black on the bottom of each of those spokes or the underside at any rate. So, and I did a black, ooh, where am I? Black outline underneath the rim too. I really put a lot of detail into this thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you <laughs> Sorry. Like, jeez. You really did, Cindy. Oh. What was I thinking? Oh, thinking it was just going to be us. You were trying to torture me. I know. <laughs> She's all happy about so it. So much for that. No. So much for that. Whatever. Whatever. So yes, that should be a lighter, a lighter gray on the top part here. See if I can put make that lighter. So that it shows up better. So now that our bicycle is white and our stripes on our flag are white, I'm going to take um, tomato red. and paint away. With our tomato red, let's see. I'll start with, I'll start with 
You can use a round or a flat. I'm thinking that the four round is too big, so I'm going to go with a one flat, a one uh, liner brush. And red. Okay, flags. The first bar on the top of the flag is red, as well as the last bar on the bottom <clears throat> is red. So let's paint this red. So watch the direction of your stripes. That's why I ended up drawing them on because when I did them freehand, I found myself adding more stripes than I needed. I'm driving myself crazy about that. I ask you a lot of things. Now, what was the what was confusing on this was that because I put the rolls in here, that how does that fabric roll and and where did the strips come out? Yeah. So that kind of really set me off. Not a lot set me off. Fine for you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Stop it. I'm sorry. You're a bad girl today. I'm sorry. I'm not used to this. You need to, go, you need to go to time out. <laughs> no, I've been in time out. That has been the problem. Oh. Anyway, you're going to love this. Wait till you see what I'm doing. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. So. Okay, we'll find out. The we'll worry of my life. We will find out. Yep. The bottom, bottom stripe here is going to be red. And it's wavy. Watch. Because this is also a nice one for um, Memorial Day. Well, that's why I got confused. I thought we were actually doing Memorial Day today. Well, we, we're going to have a class on Memorial Day, so there was no need to. But you know how we kind of end up playing it later. Yeah, we do. But I, we have another thing planned for Memorial Day. Yeah, I know. You have the hats. The hats? There's something that you want me to put on my head. <laughs> Getting me back for Easter. You have to go and buy yourself one at the dollar oh. store. Okay. Well, I will. Michael's. I think I got mine at Michael's. White. Oh, red, white, red, white, red. This is going to be much better than my first one. Not always the case, though. The second one's all. See, there you go. Go ahead and now put in your fender. A lot of base coating. I try not to add too many details, but you know, details really make the make it. You know what I'm saying? Well. Make or break a design. I don't know. I think some people get too carried away with the details. That's not me. That's not you. Not me. Be clear, I'm going to put a second coat on my flag on the red, but that's why we based it white first because I knew red tends to be a transparent color. I'm going to put little studs on my seat, leather seat cushion here. 
Let those dry. Okay. Now, if you're white, if you want to pump up, pump up, pump up your white on your flag, pour it. I know you're all decorative painters and certified and stuff, but <laughs> certifiable. <laughs> I didn't say certifiable. You ready for this? Hold on, let me get you spotlight you. Yeah, take it off that perfect thing. Are you ready for this? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Look, I did my picket fence and my water and my water bushes. and your sky and your yep. Where's your bicycle? It's back here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Melissa, <laughs> isn't that great? I did that yeah. in ten minutes. I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had this the flag. I did cheat with the flag. Okay, I had the sticker. Oh wait, well this is later. But we're gonna put the date. Oh, it broke. I have to do oh, that. I hate that when those things happen. Yeah, they're so fragile. So I start. Yeah. So I was drawing the lines. I'm like, this is gonna take forever. So I thought I'll just start painting, and I free-handed it and so anyway I was doing the outside and then I thought well, maybe I'll put the back but so when I hang it up here it's gonna look like it organizes <laughs> so getting back to this I'm going to add a highlight this is in white there I'm gonna add a highlight to my fender that's what that thing's called and to do that i'm going to take a flat clean brush and paint it with water first you don't want it too puddly but you want you put it over the red area oops if your red area shows but don't put so much that the red then goes in all over everything else because the red wasn't totally dry okay i'm going to take my round brush with some white in it and i'm going to go right up the center of the fender around there you want to put a little bit here and then on this area i'm going to come down like that if you want to take your little handy dandy mop brush and mop it out you can do that so now i'm going to take a liner brush and some black and i'm just going to outline the back side of my seat here in the bottom If you want a little bit more high shine on that, just go back with your 10 knot and stroke in a little higher shine on part of that fender and support. Our blue part of the flag, which I believe is called the Union. We are going to base coat that in with our bright blue color or whatever color you used for the water. And it's not a perfect rectangle or square because the, the flag is folded over. So pay attention to that. That's probably going to need two coats. So while that's drying, Let's put in the pole. The pole that's holding up the flag, we're going to start with mink tan. 
And if you can take the mink tan and the burnt umber and put the puddles next to each other on your palette, like that, and flatten your brush out, your liner brush or your round brush in the middle. Now, I think this round brush is going to be too big, so let's clean that out. I'm going to take, go back to my one flat, I mean, my one liner, and I'm going to try and put it in both, right in the center of that, those two puddles. With the dark side down, start at the top and draw those two colors down. If you run out, go back in, make sure you have the dark side in the right place. And then continue on with your pole. Goes into that support and then down out the other side. So again, keeping the light end up. The light side up. Down into that support. If you want to make this whole area down here the burnt umber, or at least do your best, that's fine too. So there you have a pole. Put your little I'm going to, again, double load my brush, dark side down, and make a little nodule here, a little ball. Dark side. I'm going to come in here with the light side up and put that little, I don't know, finial, would you say? There we go. Go back in with the second um, application of the blue. I think this is coming out really good. And on these ones, all I did was I, I base coated this white, white. Then I put red over the white and then I base coated the bottom word with the blue. And basically, you can either do it with your flat brush, make sure you don't make um, clumps of paint on the other side, or you can do it with your round or liner brush. Yep, that's it. Okay. How are we doing? Yeah, how's everybody doing? I'm finished, so. <laughs> yeah, rub it in, rub it in. Back there, drying. Looks oh. good. Ramona, how's your fence? My fence. Uh, I'm going to I'll show you one second. Okay. Let's spotlight her so we can, everybody can see it. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. It looks like it's on the corner of, of the property or something. It looks pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put it in a hot frame to show you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to see. <laughs>
I think we've done that before too, Melissa. One of us has been on the phone and on something else. <laughs> yep. Listening to someone pee and we're griping. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Oh, yeah. See, perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So now you can put in your flag. And you let's go to Cynthia. Ramona. Oh, beautiful. I, see, so I'm on the same wavelength as Cynthia, I think, because I myself was thinking, what do I do with the outside frame? And I was thinking of doing the um, driftwood, the weathered wood look. Well, this is just a solid piece. It was already weathered wood, though? No, it was right. just You made it weathered wood. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Your turn. You're up. Okay. Um, I have this heart frame. Oh, love it. <laughs> so, I don't have my bike done, though. No, no, we're not, we're not all done yet, but yeah. No, I don't have, I don't have my bike done. Oh, yeah. But I love it. It's coming out awesome. Yes. That is, oh, yeah. I just, you guys, all you guys, beautiful painters. I just love what you're Thank doing. Go you. for Melissa, Melissa Cheats. <laughs> hey, I, was I think he was the smart one today. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, did you say Kathy was the smart one today? No, no I said you. <laughs> <laughs> I <said> you, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> See, mine's so fast that my bike's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> the flag is just there. You're moving so fast. <laughs> you're gone, huh? Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Oh my God. We forgive you. So, <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to go over and on the flag, first off, I'm going to erase any graphite lines that I don't want showing up. And then, um, cause yeah, cause the flag's almost done. If Let's put the stars on the thing and then I'll show you how to do that. And then she can talk to you and let's see, pre-wet again, pre-wet, make sure you, it's wet and doesn't dry out instantaneously. And I'm going to take my 10 out liner brush with some white and I'm going to make little stars, it's like a little A with peakiness. So if I was drawing it with a pencil somewhere, it would be um, like this. That's what I'm doing for stars all over there. So do that. Okay, I did the stars. Let me blow dry that. Okay, I'm gonna go and do some shading now. I know how it's never, never anyone's favorite thing to do, but I am going to go with a number 10 flat. I could probably do wider, but I'm not. And I'm going to use Payne's Gray, the side load of Payne's Gray. First off, I'm going to go up the left side. And it might be a little wider than I needed it to be. So let's pick up some fresh water and we'll water that down. Try to use less. So that's one side. Then I'm going to pick up some more and I'm going to go up inside of this line.
all the way up to that peak. Next, I'm going to go underneath. This front part hangs over. Kind of curve it down a little bit. And then this little piece right here, and I'm tipping it up into that area. Now this next area is the tricky part. There's this little area here that caves in. There's a fold that actually, if I used my marker, which is, what did I do with it? Right here, goes from this peak to that area. You see where I put the, See if I can get this. The pencil mark, that's where the fold is. It's not a, a fold in the sense that this actually overlaps that. It's a fold where it just ripples. It's just a ripple. So if you need to put your a line in there to Give yourself the idea of that, where that ripple is. Let's see if I can get this a little bit more clear. Guess not. So I'm going to take my, my brush, my flat brush, pre-wet with water, then load your Payne's Gray. I'm gonna pull it toward me and start where that line is and bring it right up, right up to that peak. It looks like I didn't uh, fully dry the other side, so it disappeared, but we'll get that fully up to that peak. And then I'm gonna flip my brush, my thing around my brush over and I'm going to go on the other side and bring that up to that peak as well. This is what you call a back to back. So you can take your mop brush and you can mop that out. If it got too far away from you, you don't like how wide you got it and you wanna bring it back, take your clean brush and wipe it back. And then go back in with the mop. So now it gives you that rippled look. I'm going to have to blow dry that before I can put this one back in there. You want to deepen underneath. You want to deepen down here. I felt like this side should have a little bit of shade because I'm feeling like this is actually humped over like that. So I'm going to take a side load and it's very, it's a much lighter load then on that side and put it over here, narrow and light. Because we're creating a cone effect here. Wipe that back so it's narrow. So it's there, but it's narrower than what's on this side. This side is wide and darker. This side is light and narrower. 
I'm also thinking before I go on to the next step, we didn't do any shading against that pole. So let's go put a narrow um, shade against this pole. There we go. And let's dry that. Now I'm going to take my moon brush and I'm going to load it in some white. Make sure you wipe off the excess paint on a piece of paper towel. And I'm going to decide where my highlights are. This folds in, so this part folds out. So I'm going to draw, or I'm going to scratch a highlight into this area. Where the flag will pop out. Let's do it down here, right here where this, where it pops out this way, towards the center. Do the same here. It can be wider at the, at the bottom, narrower at the top. Okay, next I'm gonna go onto the center of this one. And if you're on white on white, it might not show up too much, but it will show up on the blue and on the red. If you wanna put a little bit on the inside of that. So let's see how that works. So now it looks like it's rippling. Yes? If you take some of that mink tan with some of that white and you make a lighter value mink tan, you can skip a little bit of a dry brush and skip some of that highlight on your top of your pole, just to give it another color. If your stars didn't show up or you've lost them, pick up some white, have some watered down white, and you can go back in and just pop up the ones that would be in the highlight area. You don't want to pop them all up. So that kind of gives them a little bit of, a little bit more definition. Okay, let's see where we're at. Oh, and because I wanted to separate the flag from the um, fence, I did a line of Payne's gray till I got to here. And then I picked up with some white. To separate that side. Anything else I forgot? You can go over, always go back to your work and reassess where you feel you've lost some highlights or some shades. And the, either you squint and look at it through squinted eyes, or you set it six feet away and look at it and say, hmm, what doesn't look right here? If you wanted to go in and add <clears throat> more shading on your bicycle, you can go in with a side load of, of the straight tomato red 
and add that, or better yet, go in and add a smidgen of the Payne's Gray to your red mix. And then put that in. You might have to go back with your red highlight and put that in. But that's how you build values. And then all you have to do is take that round brush, wherever I put it, take some white. You can pre-wet or just have a lot of water in your white brush, in your brush, and you put the white on. Go up the center, put that back in. Let me show you what I did on the outside. Okay. On the outside, I took that dome brush and dry, no water, picked up some of the red and I swirl it around on here, and then I come over to a dry part of my paper towel. Let me get a dry paper towel. Oh, it's kind of moist. Wipe out most of it onto my paper towel. And then I started to kind of scrub this color. onto my frame on the outside of my heart. So I did that all the way around. You know, when you're not with your friend here having fun, this is kind of boring. <laughs> What's nice is I get energized when I see the actual final pieces. And when you all show me your final pieces and share with us on Facebook, um, that just brings a smile to my face. And so please keep doing that. Don't stop. It's not kind of boring. It's relaxing. I'm listening to your voice. It's very soothing. Look at this. Ta-da! Very nice. Yeah. So that heart's bigger than the one that is on my on my surface here, but that's what that's all about. Yeah. Then, now to do this, this is what Melissa needs to do, this blue stuff here. For the outside, I'm going to use some glazing medium and the bright blue, your ocean color, and my paper towel. And I'm going to take a piece of my paper towel and soak it in with that glazing medium and dab some in that blue color. I'm going to start on this area and work my way up on the outside of my surface so I can see just how much paint I'm leaving behind. See that? You can bring it down. I mean, I'm working on mat board, so it's not, it's not taking it the same way wood does. If I come across the wood, because the wood is sealed, it has a softer look. So that's one way of getting some color on without having to do the side loads. Because typically for me, I would take my big brush, as you know, 
and I would just go and load it with that color and I would soften that area like so. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can do it with the glazing medium too, if I want to, with the brush and the glazing medium together. Instead of using water, use a glazing medium. across there and I think that's going to help it to pop it from the wall from Melissa's walls mm -hmm. wash this yeah again I am on paper so the water I use with a little dirty. What? I'm laughing at my flag that I stuck in the middle. <laughs> You're silly. I wish I had a smaller one. But it's waving just like yours. Yes. It's being pulled by the little bicycle. There we go. So now when I cut when I cut this heart out, I can put it right on top of my. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you've got. Are you all finished? No, I didn't finish my bicycle. Oh, you can see. Show us what you got. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at her beautiful flag. Yes. Oh yeah. Nice. That's gonna be beautiful. So in when you finish it, you post it on the on the Facebook. Yes. Yes, I will. Well, I think that was a lot of fun, Cindy. I loved your, your painting and interpretation of moving along the seashore <laughs> and um, on our journey of life. And I really enjoyed being here with you on Paint With Heart. And everybody, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next time. So everyone, yes, thank you for coming. Those of you who are watching on replay, thank you for being here watching on replay. Um, do think about it and come join us live some Sunday afternoon when it's raining and you have nothing better to do. No. <laughs> but no, it's raining day. Rainy days are a good day to paint is the way I look at it. Cold rainy days are a wonderful reason to stay in the studio and paint with us. So until next time, remember to always paint with heart. Bye everyone, thank you. No, I was just going to say that um, this past week I interviewed this author, uh, April Schluter. <laughs> I laugh at her name, Schluter. I just love saying that. Schluter, fun. April is um, a success coach, and she wrote a book called Finding Success in Balance, My, Cheerful, My Journey to the Cheerful Mind. And she's from Chicago. She came to Los Angeles because she was being interviewed for LA Parent Magazine. And I had a chance to interview her in person. We went out to dinner and she was really sweet. And she signed my book and we had a really great dinner and discussion. And she told me about her book. And it's very interesting because she grew up and became an engineer. She went to college to be an engineer. She's very science and math oriented. And so to even write a book and become a life balance coach, you know, was totally outside of her, her, um, you know, thought process is really difficult for her, but uh, so we talked about her journey and stuff, and that's going to be on Tuesday night, the interview. So I just wanted to talk about that, about one of the inspiring adventures interviews that's coming up. On Facebook. It's on Facebook. Facebook. Yes.
Yes. She seemed like a really sweet person. Yeah, there's a little bit of it already on because we did some live streaming from um, this restaurant where we did the interview in Pasadena. And that was fun too. So we kind of combined a interview at um, a review of a restaurant while doing an interview. It was one of those whirlwind situations. That yeah, to. that was cool. Yeah. So I don't think she's very artistic. <laughs> but yeah. she, you know. Not everybody can be. I know. Because you guys have some special talent. I don't know if you realize how how gifted you are. Truly. I'm gonna outline this. I can't even polish my nails without making a mistake. <laughs> Mine is starting to break off. <laughs> 